Tensai, he's gone for the dual Berettas. Love him already. Love him already. Yeah, you're loving that. <laughs> Get those dualies through. He's even got armor with them as well. Dropped over by Jakey. He's a, he's a nice little team player. Then the Entropic side, you got the five Glocks. No P250s being bought up. Now, they're just going to go and push in towards the vents. Uh -oh. Psycho is uh -oh. in there with a knife. <laughs> and he's going to be able to knife Crad in the booty. Gets himself a kill. Lackey won't allow himself to go down, but he's just left on just 36 HP. And now with Sergis already rotated down towards that B site, it's going to be difficult to get the bomb planted. But Forrester's there, and Forrester finds the kill. Gives them a bit of space to work with, but still, bomb not planted. They need to find themselves a bit of room, and that's a great kill to do it. Forrester is finding a lot of space for them to get this plant down, and that's exactly what they'll do. And Demku wanted to try and peek him, but he gets his head taken off, George. And now it's just the dual Berettas. Sensei against the world. Looking for him. Never mind, he's dead. They're great weapons, Dan. Two jewel bretters, yeah. one two guns for the price of one, but that was just uh two too much for him to really undertake. I think the one problem I find with the dual Berettas is they're just range. Their range is caught lacking a little bit, I think. Uh, that's the only issue. I think if it did have a, uh, to, a, a range buff, they would just be absolutely broken, completely insane. But uh, yeah. as, as it is, not the case. And now, as a result of the uh, perilous fraught period for the dual Berettas, it is going to be a good buy here for Entropic. But interestingly enough, Akuma aren't really ready to let this one lie, Dan. Sensei's got an M4A1S. He's got two scouts up on his teammates in Sergis and Demku. And uh, as a result, Jackie and Psycho are both going to be sporting the pistols, the Deagle and the CZ combination. Bit upset that the CZ's still out rather than the 5.7. You know, I'm a big supporter of that weapon. But interestingly enough, over towards this ramp room at the moment, there's a lot of pressure being given down early. Crad is already down to 20 HP. So this scout is going to be super effective in taking down both he and Lackey. But the first phase comes and he's not able to find the shot. Second time around, he will be able to. That is Crad hitting the deck right away. A four versus five for Akuma to now try and work with. As Demki backs away to try and hold a more passive angle on towards this ramp access. Just seems that Entropic at the moment aren't feeling too excited about going on in. Another tag into Forrester. Now that's a lot of damage done, but Lackey outside has got a lot to do and he's not able to do much because Jackie up in heaven is just trying to run riot on these T players as they're just swarming frantically to try and get into a position in which they can find a reasonable pick to let themselves back in this round. But with only 26 seconds remaining, they need to make their move and they need to make it now. Good flashbang assist from Elian with Forrester's frag up in heaven. But they still are yet to dislodge Sensei inside the site. He's going to be the key man here, Dan, with this A1S. And they've got 10 seconds. There's no way they can do this one. And Sensei, even finding two from the back vents there, will just be the final. Nailing that coffin in the round. Uh, Akuma, a great little rebuttal there. They, they're able to take themselves back into this game, get it in early, deny Entropic any sort of breathing room early on really put the pressure on them put their their foot on the on the throat of entropic early on and now we'll see if the t side can force by their way to victory once again got a couple deagles already purchased up the scout for elian as well and for akuma they've got plenty just to to work with here Got a couple of MP9s as well, George. We love the MP9s. We do love a good MP9. I'm a big fan of the MP9 myself. I think yeah. it's a very good weapon. Um, I think up close and personal is where it obviously really thrives. Um, but um, even with all of that being said, with the MP9 being up close and personal, it can be exceptionally effective at long range as well. We've seen times before in which the tap firing is actually just mega impressive with it, and you can get a load of frags with it too. So we'll see if that comes into fruition in this round. Of course, these MP9s and this buy here from Akuma is going to be far beyond what Entropic can really materialize in their own right. Struggling already, it would seem, for both these, uh, for the Entropic side with the, with the buy. 
just don't fancy their chances in this round, Dan. I mean, thinking about it last round, right? And Akuma had a really strong buy. They had an M4. They had two scouts. We only seen one scout here and no real other weaponry to support that. Uh, only three deagles, and they've recently been nerfed, so it's not too fantastic from this position out. Still got that long range, super high damage headshot potential. As yeah, well, this is just falling apart for a dropic. Just quick flurry of kills from the Akuma side. Leads it up to just Crad and Forrester, two versus five. I mean, Forrester's gotten himself down the vents, hit per parade. Not sure what he's going to be able to do from this position with one player right on top of him. And that is Jackie. Forrest is actually going to try and go forwards. I think he, he well, he knows that there was a player over towards Secret in the form of DemQ who took down one of his teammates. And oh, he's been held across just as DemQ started jiggling. So Forrest is going to be up close. And with a nade oh. in his hand, he might be dead. But that Molotov makes life difficult for our Forrester. And DemQ is just about able to pull out the MP9. A few warning shots come his way. Forrester has to back off and instead catches Jackie. Trying to come for the hunt on his own MP9. So at least one kill found. I'm not sure how much that's going to benefit the Entropic side, though. Yeah, Forrester finally hits not the Not much. Net. Not going to impact them all that much, if I'm going to be honest with you. Akuma get away with that 2-0 start, which is the main thing. Or the 2-1 start, I suppose. Uh, but the, I always say, Dan, a little... Uh, little known fact I always come out with is that I think that getting the second round force back is somewhat more impactful than uh, than getting the the pistol because you end up resetting that T side so much harder than they would have initially been set back anyway. You get yourself up to three rounds. There's potential for a fourth if you can just break the back of it immediately. Now you've got a great opportunity to just try and set yourself up for great amounts of success here. Immediately, Sensei's just going to wrap around outside. He falls, but Jackie has got his coverage. And now that leaves just two players to try and clutch the round out from this point forward. Elian will be down on that B site, though, to get a bomb plant, which is going to give enough money for Entropic to buy next round. And potentially enough money with the loss bonus starting to stack up to get the AWP, potentially, too, which will be sweet for them. But either way, Kuma, 3-1 start. Bomb diffused. Very comfortable, very cushy, very clean. Yeah, I think I think for Entropic though, you've got to be happy with the way that round went. Getting the a bomb game, plan. Getting yeah, bomb it's plan, huge. Yeah. Getting a kill as well. It, I mean, it's not much one kill, but it forces a little bit of rebuying from that uh, CT side. Just anything to try and lower this cash because you can already see Sergis already at seven thousand dollars. Demq and Psycho aren't too far off that as well. So Akuma, they're already starting to build up a bit of that money. And now in Tropic they need to start hitting these sort of early shots here, give themselves an advantage and try and get a couple more rounds on the board, try and work through that Akuma economy that's starting to build up. The sensei out towards the yard. He's just trying to hope that maybe a player peeks out from the silo. But uh, it'll get forced away by the utility and now it's going to rejoin his teammate over towards the ramp position instead. And that's just as Lackey starts working forwards out towards the yard here. A couple of smokes from his teammates. Going to give him a bit of cover to push forwards. Ooh, just a few shots through the smoke from Dem enough to reveal Lackey's position. And the kill follows through as they try and push in towards his A site. They know they've lost the flank. They know they have to go quickly to try and remedy the situation but now they're walking into the orb of sensei and oh this is a shot nickel pack's able to just gun him down sensei not able to get out of danger that's the orb going down and now elian's going to be able to wield one himself uncontested by an akuma orb entropic are now going to be able to find a lot of room in towards his b site they surely get the plant down elian can probably position himself Watch towards his decon door, oh, and there yeah. you go, Jackie, caught by that weapon. Elliot's oh, looking for more. Oh, oh, oh. oh, he flicks onto DemQ. Get out of the server, and now Sergey's last one alive. A one versus three. Nothing you can really do about this one apart from maybe upgrade to an AK-47. I think that is best case scenario, Dan, but that round completely turns on its head as soon as the AWP is lost for Akuma. Obviously. They give a lot of merit to Sensei with this orb, and they've gone pretty early with giving him this weapon when they could have potentially looked to try and bonus round it out a little bit further. He had to reinvest yeah. anyway. I, I completely understand that. But they give a lot of pressure, a lot of weight, and a lot of um, resources to commit Sensei to being on this AWP. 
which for me is obviously a very viable strategy. He's very good with it. But when you can donate that over to Elian, who didn't buy one in that round and now gets the AWP for absolutely free, it wins the round for them, no doubt. As you can see here, quick shot through the door, but this adjustment onto the second player, he barely even sees him. I'm sure his teammate would have had the frag anyway as he was standing right next to him. But even still, it's impressive nonetheless. And Entropic able now to just try and really get some traction on this T side. Orps up for both sides now, though. So this is the battle that we wanted to see. The battle of the prodigal Orpers. The battle of the new CIS talents. And already, oh, Elian is just millimeters away from finding a very concealed shot through smoke. This time, though, it is Sensei who wins out on that opening duel. And they're going to push Psycho forwards as well off the back of it. Forrester needs to be aware, but he's got two angles to check in. His gun barrel spotted. Easy for Psycho. Akuma looked to bounce back almost instantly off of that previous round. Nickelback wants to try and find anything at all. But his, his vision is limited from this position, and I think his foot is going to be spotted as well. Psycho sees it, and that's the bomb drop as well. They've just got full control of Lobby. No way in, no way out for Entropic. And now it's Lackey all alone. A one versus five, and with little to do in this one. Just wants to try and find a kill. Could maybe catch Sensei here. This would be a nice kill to find. Hello. Nice to see you, to see you nice. He's going to try and find whatever more he can. Quick little double. Love it. Bit of trigger discipline, unfortunately, after that, Sergis is ready. But, uh, I mean, two kills from there, not too bad. And they don't recover the AWP as well. Yeah, that's actually pretty big because there's not going to be the money to recover that AWP in the aggregate, I think. Uh, maybe actually Sensei may have just done so. But even still, nice play from Lackey just to take as many resources out of the hands of Akuma as possible. And they have managed to get the AWP back, so aggregated across by one of his teammates, I think. But even still, the same is going to be reciprocated here for Elian. You can see they've given a lot of priority to Elian with this AWP as well. So Entropic playing a similar system. They've even sacrificed Forrester down to just a Desert Eagle and Nickelback onto the Mac 10. They give this such credit. And to be fair, credit where credit's due, why wouldn't you? And Elian is the monster that he can be at times. However, in this round, already down in towards secret, DemQ is the first face. He's the rotator. He's going to get a decent chunk of grenade damage onto Nickelback. Incendiary comes on in to stop Krad's progress. Now, I think they're starting to realize they're up against a little bit of resistance over here at the B site, and it might not be as easy to crack as they initially thought it might be. Going to be difficult. MQ is going to be a huge fight here, and he is able to win it. Brad, all Sergis could have had two from on top of the rafters. Lackey does take him down, but eventually his body will fall into reactor core, and that's not a good place to be. Nope. It's just, I mean, Entropic trying to find these kills, but every single time they're getting punished. That leaves Forrester alone, a one versus three. Deagle in hand. Entropic put all their eggs into this basket, and unfortunately, the basket has been dropped. Eggs are cracked. Oh There's no! Yolks everywhere. No, not the yolk, it's the best part! Poor I'm eggs. I'm afraid so, I'm afraid so. Uh, how am I going to make my eggy bread now? How is it going to happen? Well, Entropic don't have any answers, Dan. They don't have any money. So I'm afraid for uh, any of you Entropic fans out there, this is going to have to be a moment in which they need to consider their time and consider their finances. They're going to take a time out to do so, and I don't hate that at all. I think it's the best conceivable outcome at this moment in time. Um, Elian needing that AWP at the moment to be effective, not really having the start that he'd have wanted. But speaking of not having the starts that you'd have wanted, Crad in much the same vein, not really doing too hot either, Dan. Zero and seven, auditioning for the new role as James Bond at the moment. Yeah. The 007. But uh, is, no, is the he, agency's is he not ready for him yet. Is he what? Is he, does he ha not have any assists either? I don't know. This is the nature of uh. the, the ESL, the IEM HUD here, is that you don't get the full full picture. I guess when we get on board with him, it might tell us. But um, yeah. we'll have to see. I, I would hope, just for the meme culture, that there is no assist. You know? Not trying to wish ill on the guy, but I'm no afraid, assist. I'm please. sorry to inform you, he already has two assists. Gosh darn it. So, unfortunately, not going to be going too far in that application process. Whack. He's going to have to find a different role to play. Maybe Q. Uh, yeah? You reckon he could do a good Q? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, you've got Lead in the squad kind of thing. Yeah. He's the tech guy. Maybe I think he's more of an M. We'll go for an M. Okay. 
CIS qualifier talking about British pop culture. Could not be me. <laughs> nah, I never knew that. CIS main <laughs> event talking about British pop culture. Could not be me yeah. either. Yeah. Oh, well. well. I mean, Somewhere unfortunately, else. I don't know much CIS pop culture, so... That is true. Yeah, <laughs> any references would probably fall flat in that manner. But... Yeah, yeah, I feel like we might be right there. Probably good <laughs> that we steer clear away from that one for a while yeah. until we uh, inform ourselves and stop with our cultural ignorance. Yeah. But uh, ignorance is bliss when you're Jackie and you can tank an HE grenade. Of course, that's going to try and soften players up, but it also doesn't reveal his location because he just holds the line. And as a result of that, he can call in for the assistance of his teammates and still stay alive in his own right. Dem Q to four. Okay, Jackie with one more. Tapping away with a P250, but eventually he gets dunked on. Sensei from downtown drops the airstrike on the head of his opposition to bring up six for Akuma. A, a nice start so far for this uh, this Akuma side, you have to say. Limiting what Entropic have been able to find here. They've found one gun round Entropic, and they found the pistol round without the conversions after it. So... Akuma have done a really good job at just making sure that, that Entropic aren't able to build any sort of momentum early on in this first half. It is the CT side of Nuke, however, so you have to take that maybe with a little bit of a pinch of salt in the sense that it is one of the more CT-sided uh, maps still in the pool. And Lackey has read that position perfectly. Did he hear him, maybe? So it seemed no like idea. he knew he was there. He was ready for that fight. Either way, it is the man advantage now for Entropic. Man advantage the first time in a few rounds here, and you just got to hope that Lackey can continue his good work down on this B site, and he already has done inside of the halls. Taking Psycho down now opens up so much freedom of movement. Open borders now into the B site, really. There's just going to be Jackie trying to stand guard, making sure that nobody can come down through the vents. Admittedly, though, it doesn't look like Entropic are particularly concerned at the moment with going in towards this B site. They still look like they want to go and try and negotiate A. Speaking of, though, Elian will make sure that the negotiations are short. That is one thing for certain. Crad grabbing one more. It is all just left up to Sensei, and as he rounds the corner. He will miss the first shot, unfortunately, and will be ran down by Lackey. So a good round for Entropic. They only lose Nickel back in the process. So to get a third on the board with a convincing victory such as that is going to feel good. Unfortunately for them, Akuma do have plenty of money, Dan. And they're going to continue their buying until the bitter end. And Entropic still have a lot of more, a lot of way to go. They, they've got to keep chipping away. Got to get their hammer and chisel out. Sculpting away the Akuma economy. Getting their uh, Michelangelo statue sorted. Yeah, yeah, Michelangelo. Love it. Donatello, Leonardo. I forget Tortellini. the name of the other. I forget the name of the other Ninja Turtle, but Tortellini is a pasta. I know. I'm sorry. It's not even the best pasta. Yeah. No, the best pasta is the pushing towards this lobby from Akuma. I like that one. Yeah. When al dente, the... it's perfect. <laughs> Unfortunately, God. Forrester is, is a little bit twisted up. He's fusely right now. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like Akuma might wrap this one up in a little bow and turn him into Kinchigli. Because <laughs> Entropic just don't have much of a say in this round, I'm afraid. So they might put a hole through him and make him penne, and they absolutely will. Sensei sorts it out, the pasta puns are a-flowing, and Akuma finds seven. And this is exactly what we were talking about as well, with Akuma just not letting Entropic get any momentum at all. Again, Entropic winner went round. It seems like a nice round. You think, okay, maybe a little bit can get going here. Nah, Akuma just immediately shut them down with aggressive, uh, an aggressive crunch in towards the lobby and just completely ruin any chance Entropic have of, of, of getting what they wanted to do going. Like, they have no chance to actually run their setup. They're just dead. They're just dead straight off the start, and this time they're going to go, all right, well, if you're not going to let us run our defaults, then we're just going to rush in towards the B site instead, and down the vent they go. They managed to get quite a few players down. Psycho will have heard that. Definitely hears them stomping around towards that B site, but you can see the rotations from this Akuma side were quick, but not able to find any damage. Forrester with a nice couple kills there. Gives his team space, and Elian finds one towards the yard as well, catching Psycho. Looking for a little bit of a rotation play. 
Finally, Akuma have get a little bit of success here in this round. Sensei and Jackie, the last two alive, have managed to bring things into just a one-man deficit, but by the position of Sensei, it's looking like they're already just decided to save. Yeah, it looks like they have, actually, weirdly enough. I mean, I thought with Jackie having a kit and being well-positioned over towards the ramp that they could really consider going for something like this. But it seems they think better of it. And unfortunately, better days are not ahead for Jackie. He gets taken down by Lackey. It's going to be pretty clear cut where Sensei is going to be saving. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't feel too encouraged to go and chase that one down with the finances that Entropic are currently sporting. As a result of no. losing that AK-47, that's going to be a further reinvestment. But good entries here from Forrester. You need more of this, really. This is the reason in many sense of the word, why the T side is considered to be a little bit more difficult on Nuke. You have to really make things happen. You have to have a very clear idea of what you want to do. And for Akuma here, they're just kind of allowing Entropic to walk into them in a number of these setups. That time Entropic took the round by the scruff of the neck and threw it against the wall and said, no, no, this is mine now. But I'm liking this proactive position from Sensei. Unfortunately, just the incendiary spreads to him just enough to move him away. Because this looks like it's going to be... Oh, okay. A little bit of a nade strike in towards the, B, the A site. It is massively unsuccessful. In fact, completely backfires. As it is Jackie to find a kill. But Lackey trying desperately to entry his way back in is not successful. But the rest of his team are. Three kills in quick succession. Sergis is left wondering what happened. But he's got a chance to bring this one back. They're not yet into the site. And better yet, they still don't have the bomb, really. So with a minute and five seconds soon to be to play with... Sergis. This is a really winnable one versus three attempt here. And whilst he has just spotted a player going outside, he's got to stand tall and take the duel. And the AK-47 with its one-shot headshot potential will win out. And Tropic finally getting themselves a, a, a little bit of momentum going here. I like it. Let's keep this one running. Give the Akuma guys a little bit of a fight here in this first half. You don't want to be getting run over. But again, it wasn't many players surviving, though. So you got to worry about that entropic economy. You can see that only really Elian and, and Forrester, maybe Lackey as well, has a, have a little bit of cash to play with. But Nickelback's left on a Mac 10 in this round. And I think that's more of a uh, decision than a, than a necessity. They know they're going to be up against the pistols, and it is just mostly unarmored pistols. Jackie has bought himself a Deagle, though, and has already found one kill with it. Losing two of his brethren, though. He needs to try and find more if he wants to turn this round on its head. Peeking towards a lobby could be successful with Lackey's position. If he steps any further, he's probably going to be Swiss cheese. And indeed, it is Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese or penne pasta? <laughs> I was going for Swiss cheese because it has multiple Lots of holes. holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean... If you get killed by the AWP, you can be Penny Pasta because it's one big yeah. long hole. Yeah, that's why I think it worked. That's why I think that the Penny, yeah, the penny like, Pun worked. I like Swiss cheese, though. Not like actually I like Swiss cheese, but I like the the, the metaphor that you're going for or the simile. Yeah. I don't know which one it is. But either way, Sergis with the Zeus. I love this. This is something I really love. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, think it's he's going to be find successful. With it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be successful, mind you, but I do love the Zeus purchase. $200 for. Potentially a free kill. Absolutely. I mean, Take it every day of the week. Yeah. I think if you're buying a Zeus for $200, you may as well buy the Julius for 300 Right? You make a very compelling argument, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I am sold. You if you, if, if you pitch that to me on Dragon's Den, I would give you all the money instantly. I don't think he's going to get the chance. It's not going to happen. I will say, though, that this little resurgence from Entropic has actually been mega for them. More in the sense that, you know, six rounds on the T side of Nuke is actually pretty damn good. Of course, yeah. if you can get to eight, if Entropic can continue these winning ways for the final two rounds of the half, then obviously that's better. You go into the second half with a lead. I don't want to stress this enough, but the CT side is the preferred of the two sides here. There's not many maps left in Counter-Strike which are imbalanced in one team's favor, one side's favor. But Nuke, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, is one of those maps still where you can have a little bit better of a CT side. It's not too 
different. It's it's negligible almost, but it's like a 9-6 or a 10-5 at times. It can be very, very impactful moving into the second half of the game. Bit of spray from Demq there, trying to find uh, a bit of a, not a lucky kill, but a chance of a bit of damage. See what he can maybe collect instead. It'll be Sensei who finds the opener. Zergis as well, finding one towards the ramp. Now a support from Jekki, and they're going to line Ooh. up. Can't quite finish Elian, who has one HP. Sensei will instead mop that one up, and that leaves Lackey alone, a one versus four. Good luck. Good luck. What, what, what percentage chance are you putting on Lackey winning this one? Am I going to be the CSGO gonna... win predictor? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll go with 2%. Ah, uh, yeah, because I, I, I would have gone for, like, under 5%. Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe like, a 3 or a 4 percenter, but... Uh... No, I don't fancy his chances here at all. Not in the slightest. More specifically because he doesn't have the bomb either. Which is going to make this one all the more complicated as he gets taken down finally. So Akuma will deny the possibility of there being a victory in this half for Entropic at any point down the line. 8 to 6... Ellie and back up on the AWP. And to be honest with you, Dan, I'm I'm really not sure about that outside commitment. I think it all does come falling apart when Nickelback tries to make his way into the garage area. Uh, I, I'm just not sure about it. It seemed that the T side where the last three rounds or so and Tropic have been exceptionally coordinated in their T approach. This round seemed a bit sporadic, a bit more split apart, like the way they were playing the early parts of this half. Anyway, lots of utility being expended towards main entrance on the A site right now, and Elian's vision ultimately obscured. Lots of fire being dropped from either side, and now finally a frag for Crad as he gets himself up to that fourth frag of the game for himself. Of course, Sensei and Jackie are not going to let sleeping dogs lie, though. They are not interested in that. They don't own a kennel. They're just going to get themselves pushed into the B site instead, whilst taking two sacrificial lambs along the way. Molotov in to try and dislodge Demq, but it won't be enough. It's just gone a tad too deep, and he finds Forrester for free. Elian keeping his sights peeled, and even Demq feeling so committed that he can just go for it. But either way, Ooh. two versus three now in the sight as Nickelback finishes off Demq to the hands of his own Molotov. Elian just needs to try and play this one to time, play this one patiently. Any outrageous pushes coming in from Akuma, he can definitely punish. Nickelback is going to have to be the bait set up, though, and it's not really gone all that well. He takes the opening duel, and Elian misses the first shot to bring 9-6 to six onto the scorecard for Akuma. A strong first half for them, Dan. We'll have to see if it continues in the second after this quick break.
get it. Welcome back, everybody, to Entropic versus Akuma here in the first best of one of the day on Nuke. Entropic had a bit of a rough start on the T side, managed to bring it back to a respectable 9-6, and now we'll get to see what they can do on the CT side. Well, got a slight pause, Dan, but what do you think of that first half so far for Entropic? I think Entropic will be pretty pretty happy with it. I think they definitely could have had more after winning the pistol round, and obviously they, they didn't get the conversions. Akuma were able to fight back pretty quickly. But I think I think they'll be happy overall. I think we got a decent amount of gun rounds through them to feel confident heading now onto this defensive side that they can get some at rolling here and really give Akuma a strong fight. And it's a little battle for a first win in this group A. Eh? Akuma still have that free round lead though. And Let's see what they decide to purchase up. Psycho is going to go for a smoke and a flashbang. I think he dropped over a P250 to Jackie as well. So just having a bit of that more longer range potential is, is always nice. Well, for the Entropic side, they've just gone for the, for the full sets of Kevlar here. They've not got any utility to play with, not even a kit either. So if Bomb goes down here, it's going to be a bit of a uh, an awkward situation for them. A little bit awkward, Dan, but they're going to hope it doesn't get to that point. With a strong setup already onto the B site here, Crossfire Central as Elian is ready for some heads to round the corner. He finds Psycho first. It's a little bit sporadic, but he does get the frag. Nickelback does assist him ultimately, as now they're just going to start to sport a number of players into this B site. And I think that Akuma should be somewhat cognizant of this and instead just bamboozle them, go the opposite way. Why not? The A site's free, might as well take it. Sensei grabs another frag for himself, and now the P250s are really getting put to work, with Forrester finding the Wrath of 1-2, and this already has been nightmarishly scenarioed for the Entropic side. They didn't need this to come down to a bomb plant, they have no kits. So their hard, steadfast rotation in towards the B site seems to have come back to bite them. And Akuma just have all the right setups in all the right places. Crad getting tagged on down, but not finished off. Unfortunately, Lackey suffers the fate that he was supposed to, as now he's the last man standing on just 5 HP. Akuma will get away with this pistol round. There's no real way that Crad can win it, as he gets run and gunned down by DemQ. Well, that hurts for Entropic. That definitely hurts for the Entropic side. Akuma finding double digits first here. And now have a real good chance to try and just form a, a, a stronger hit lead here. If you get 12 to 6, that would be perfect for the Akuma side. It would give you plenty of chances to try and get yourself across the line here in this first map of, of the day. And now Entropic going for that force buy. We saw Akuma able to do it themselves in that first half. But this time, it's a little bit less powerful of a force by the one Akuma had. Because obviously Psycho got that knife in the pistol round on that first half, which allowed them to get that M4A1S up onto, I think it was Sensei who, who was wielding it. This time it's just a scout and four deagles, but already attacked from Elian on that scout. He just get a little bit in return, and his teammate's not very much better either. Try to nickel back tag down. Leaves Entropic in a position where they've just got so little HP for a few of these players. This is Mac 10 for Sergis. Could find some real powerful kills here. And he spots a couple in the side. Doesn't find either of them, though. And Forrester's Deagle. Yes, he's now low on HP himself, but he's found that opening pick. Well... I don't think it's lasted long there, Dan, as DemQ finds two frags back with the Mac 10. A short lived opening Whoa. pick is there! Ah, no, Nickelback, that was very awkward. If only the Deagle had its body damage that it used to. Okay, all of a sudden, Forrest is now opening the round back up to a potential winnable situation. Jackie's only on 53 HP, so the Deagle here, operated by Lackey, could be extremely potent. He's just got to wait for his teammate to make the play. They can't possibly anticipate this position right away. Forrester is going to have to fall foul to it in order to reveal the location for Jackie. Up on top, Lackey gets it with the recovered AK-47. Full defuse will be stuck. And Akuma do what Entropic did in the first half and end up losing the second round to a strong force by on the CT side. That could wreck them now, Dan, for rounds to come. 
Yeah, at least they get a bomb plant through. Look how awkward it was in the vents. Oh, just give me a bullet. Runs out of ammo. Yeah, it runs out of ammo. Unfortunately, well, well, more fortunately for the Entropic side, they are able to recover the round nonetheless. They get themselves a, a seventh. And the bomb plant for Akuma, it gives you a bit of extra cash. It's an extra, extra $800 per player. Which, I mean, it gives DemQ, what, 3700 The rest of them are sort of middling between, like, two point two and, and $3,000 there. So, there's potential if you want to go for a force buy. There's also potential if you just want to take the full eco this round. And maybe buy up in the next with, what, the $1,900 loss bonus? Well, that'd give you about $4,000 at minimum for, for players. It, it could work. Instead, they're going to go for the force buy here. I don't think that's a, that's a bad option. I think that's fair enough. Try and fight back, and uh, I mean, of course, in Tropic, they only had one player surviving that round as well. So their economy is really, really hurt too. So you gotta be wary of that one. As it's a couple Tech Nines, a couple Galils, and a single AK for DemQ on this Akuma side. There's plenty of rifles though for the CTs, and Nickelback just about saves his teammate there inside of the site, getting the kill onto DemQ. That's one of the rifles gone. The big rifle gone as well. That is a huge giveaway early on. Put a lot into this round, Dan, and they're expecting to get a lot out. And unfortunately, when you put a lot in, you can have high risk and high reward, but you also lose a lot. That risk does come back to bite you as it has just done, as Lackey has taken yet two more players out of the equation for just the cost of Elian. A four versus two now, a two player advantage. Sergis and Sensei need to try and make something of this. The Tech-9 tapping away, but unfortunately not able to accrue any damage before the Galil swings into the site. Now, Forrest is back here. He'll make his swing. He'll make his mark felt, dropping the bomb, leaving it all just up to Sensei, who will pr get protected. It's Nickelback to take him down, making sure that his teammate on low HP survives it, and Tropic get that all-important eighth round, that all-important weathering of the storm in the force by Akuma now have to take some form of an eco. Yeah, you have to. No bomb plan, no extra cash coming through. Yeah, it's going to be nine from Tropic. Unless something catastrophic goes wrong. And uh, I, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. You've got the couple AKs. You've got the couple CT rifles. One of which is an AUG as well. As well as an MP9 for Crad that can maybe farm a little bit of cash here for this Entropic side. Because well, both him and, and Lackey don't actually have that much cash in reserve. But a nice open for Elian there. Does give Tropic exactly what they wanted. And now with this hit coming in towards the A side, it's all going well for the Entropic side. A clean Beautiful. sweep. Beautiful. Exactly what you wanted, yeah. Beauty. And now that puts Entropic back within striking distance of Akuma. Best start possible that they could have had. They reset that loss bonus away from the Akuma side. They would initially have inherited from that win in a pistol round. They get three rounds off the back of it. And now they find themselves at 10 to 9. Got some serious firepower beneath their belts now as well, and also starting to stack up some serious cash onto players like Nickelback and Forrester. So with a few more rounds like these, you might find yourself in quite a successful position if you are the Entropic side, and that can help power you through toward the end of the half. Now, plenty of progress being made outside here, but Nickelback has other ideas, already a tickling worth of damage, but goes a little bit too aggressive in towards the doors and faces the wrath of DemQ before Forrest is able to find a trade with his own aggression in towards Lobby. Unfortunately for the CT side, they are yet to really compute the aggression that's coming in towards the B site now. Lackey is going to be the first port of call, and he has done so very well with those two opening frags. A second or a third even available to his left in just a moment, which he'll now soon realize goes for it. Lackey has just wrecked this round, completely torn it limb from limb. Akuma left wondering what happened. They thought they'd got the drop on Entropic, but they could not catch Lackey sleeping. It's all up to Sergis, one versus four. He doesn't have the bomb. He doesn't really have many opportunities inside this round. I don't really feel like it's going to happen for him. He might be able to catch this player up towards the lobby. It is Forrester, who's just sort of milling about over there. So there may be a, a frag... On the cards, but we have 30 seconds to play with. There's no chance he wins this round. He's just trying to save this AK-47. So they can use it in the next one. He's just desperate for any sort of kill, but no. 
I think he's now resigned, resigned to his fate. He understands it's over, and yeah, 13 seconds will just tick on by. As in Tropic, they know they've won the round as well. They're just going to see if they can maybe catch him over in one of these uh, places down on the B site. Crad's having a look up towards A as well. Nobody's close enough, though. Nobody's close enough to take him down. Now we sit at the tie game, 10 to 10. Indeed we do, Dan. And better yet than that for the entropic side is the finances for Akuma are once again just going to find themselves a bit desolate. They're going to be looking a little bit worse for wear. And here's some more bad news in case you didn't already have enough. Elian's now got the AWP. So you're putting a lot of pressure and a lot of weight here on Sergis to get a lot done with this AK-47. You've got Sensei saving out everything for the Glock. I mean, you've got players just really purchasing up bare bone stuff here and if Sergis goes down then the round goes with it you imagine and Zlaki just patrolling a great job in the last round to sh shut down any progress towards B he can do the same again here from his position over at the ramp room looking forward to engagements that might soon come with Sergis over here in a second but not to be just yet gonna play it cool their game of chicken continues over towards this position i do love this like this is one of the things that i love about nuke is you just get this constant game of back and forth will they won't they over towards the ramp room and eventually it always comes down to they will because who doesn't love a good ramp rush on nuke right it's the go-to scenario when everything's going wrong you just throw in the uh, the ramp rush it's like the brush beyond does too flashbang will be evaded though by lackey but unfortunately Sergis is able to get the frag. Elian missing an uncharacteristic miss. Now has to find some shots, but they're just not going to give them to him. Crad with it all to do, doing his best lackey impression from the previous round, and it's going one better. Finds himself the 3k from the entry point. Sensei is the last player remaining. It has been somewhat costly for Entropic, but it's still a round win. Ultimately, Akuma didn't really bring much into it, though, so I suppose they can be happy with what they've got so far, and it still might yet not be over. The Sensei is considering a rotation towards the A site. I think Elian's up there, though, so I think he should have this kill. He's over towards main. There you go. He was ready for that one. 11 on the board. Entropic with the lead for the first time since... Pistol. The, the pistol first pistol. Round? Yeah. yeah, the first pistol round. When they went 1-0 up and then immediately went 1-1 one -one afterwards. So, yeah. yeah ni nice shots, though, from Crad. Hugely impactful. Uh, it's easy to get good shots when you're up against pistols, I suppose. True, I, don't think he, but... I don't think he gets that off against AKs and what have, but even still, it is impressive nonetheless. That's exactly what Entropic needed in that round. The oh! things were starting to spiral. Okay, goodbye, Sensei. Caught napping. Yeah, he's just been taken to the morgue. A one-way ticket, I'm afraid. Forrest wants more as well. Oh my goodness Almost me. catches Checky. Trying to escape with that AWP. Fortunately for Jackie, he does manage to escape. And now they're reconsidering their approach. But Forrester, that's a lot of info for this uh, Entropic side because they saw him backing away. They know that now they're not really considering anything towards lobby. So <laughs> in general, that means that you're probably looking towards the yard as your, as your point of contact. I believe Elian is patrolling that area right now, but I think the rest of the CTs have decided that it's time to get a bit of a read, a bit of a drop on this in toward the B site. Now... We've seen yeah. before that Entropic have a bit of a propensity for over-rotation. That came back to bite them in the pistol. Going to boost over the top of this smoke. Oh, nearly find an opening, but it's actually going to be Nickelback on the crossfire that's going to try and get this one sorted out. HE grenade pulled out, but he realizes that he needs the assistance of his teammate in time, and now it gets taken down. Two on three. The HE grenade does tickle away at Sergis a fair amount, but not enough to finish him off at all. Now Elian is once again standing guard over towards this B site. He's surely going to find a shot here sooner rather than later. If not, then Forrester might just do as he swings into the site. Bold and brash finding the frag. Now just got to figure out where Jackie is, but Elian will do that for him. Got to give some plaudits, by the way, to Forrester and Lackey. They have been lights out this game so far. Relentless amounts of aggression from Forrester towards Lobby on this CT side. And Lackey now getting the double up set up for his troubles so far. He's being bestowed with a very honorable privilege as they find themselves 12 to 10. I like this. I like this. You do? Yeah, I think it's a good little change. 
shapes things up a little bit just as Akuma well just say just as Akuma start to find a little bit of success but even then they're not really finding success as they're left with a few tech nines a Glock and a CZ not what I'd call the winning formula but uh, you never know But a utility is going to rain in on towards this A fight and Tech Nines. Oh, tech, nines. tech Nines finding success. Two quick kills from Sergis. Luckily, there is a bit of rebuttal from these CTs to try and manage the situation. And but it's the double orbs, two on three. Bomb dropped inside of the A site. A lot of potential and all. Ellen is being flanked on Sensei. He could have a knife kill if he wants to. He's going to Glock him instead, straight executing him. And now it's all up towards Lackey, a one versus three. Flash blinds him up as Bomb gets planted. And he needs to find himself an opener. Spots the very side of sight, jump in, misses the first shot, and that's a huge round from Akuma. Yeah, massive round as well. Force by ends up working out the Tech Nines. Dan, you always say Tech Nine 90% win rate. Yeah. That might be a turning point for them there. Akuma getting away with it. Thankfully for Entropic, they have done well so far to build up enough of an economy that they can just go right back into a decent setup here. It's not going to be the double orb. They could have afforded it. They could have dropped it out. Forrester, for example, could have done so. I do find it a little bit alarming how everybody, aside from Nickelback, has the money for a kit, and yet only two of them have been purchased. That feels like it could be a bit of a blunder in the future. But the orb is up for Elian here, Dan. And that is the key thing, really, right? Unfortunately, it is not going to matter for the any opening frags of the round because J Jackie has caught Lackey. Lots of ease all over the place, but uh, Nickelback is not even going to be in a position right now where he can make a trade because Jackie is not facing into him. As they now come to blows, Nickelback finally will bring it back into a four on four. So risky business there for a moment for Entropic, but I think they're going to need to make some readjustments towards this outside position. I think Akuma have started to realize this is quite easily exploitable. They've done so for a few rounds now. And Tropic haven't really given them much resistance out here. Alien Zork could be crucial. Sensei wants to go for the peak, it looks like. Actually, he's going to back away. Deploys a smoke instead. Does have a little bit of a gap in that Alien can play on. It's Crab, who's going to be taking most of the contact. Now as Alien swings up to assist, missing the first shot. Uncharacteristic. But it's Crad who will find success. Two quick kills, looking for more. Can't do it. Eventually he'll get taken down. Needs his teammates to now finish the job. And it's Demq against two. Who is Alien's up towards the heaven position? But where is Nickelback? Don't even get to find out. Alien finishes him off. And Entropic very quickly bounce back after a disappointing round in the prior. 13 to 11 on the board. And Kuma, though, they have decent cash off the back because obviously they won that sort of Tech 9 purchase. It was a bit of a min buy. They didn't spend all their cash. They came out of it with a couple of weapons. So for them, bomb plan. They, they actually have, yeah, and the bomb plant, of course, a, a little bit of extra cash when you win. I think it's 250 extra dollars when you win. Yeah. With a bomb uh, yeah. plant. Um, and now. They're in a position where, like, four players can buy. Sergis can't, really. He's on 3,400. He could just get left with a Galil, and they go for the full buy around it, and that's exactly what they're going to do. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. As Akuma have it all to do here, Dan. Both teams with a great setup, great utility, as... Uh, as portrayed by the IEM HUD. I do like the IEM HUD, to be fair. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. It's very clean, very simple, and gives you all the relevant information, which I think for me is, is the main thing. Even still, Elian here, opportunity knocks to try and find a frag down towards Secret. Unfortunately, once again, the B site falls victim to being a little bit too susceptible to early hits. Nickelback has had to quickly curtail his way down here, Dan just cover this one off and that's going to leave the a site defense a little bit weaker than it wants to be initially forrester and crad are going to elect for a boost up into rafters and i do like this as an adjustment if they can make it work a couple of missed jumps there but in the end they get it it's a bouncy castle over on the a site for now nickelback just jumps spotting now going to be forced away from that angle by flames but 
At the same time, H she grenade returns far and he's able to quickly wrap around. Will this be anticipated here by Sergis? It seems not, as the first frag is garnered. Now Nickelback just able to swing back into the site, give himself some coverage, but he knows that there's gonna be more pressure coming. And speaking of pressure, Sensei knows it too. DemQ comes in for another trade frag. They see one or two players down on the B site. They assume that's the whole hit and then get a little bit too curious for their own good. Up in Raptors now, Forrester has a lot on his plate, but he is a very hungry boy. He finds two frags, about to try and make it a third onto Sensei. Does so successfully. Lackey clean Psycho. It's 14 for Entropic. Wow, I mean, a fair play. A nice little turnaround from the Entropic side as things looked like they were going to start spiraling a little bit out of control, but they, they managed things nicely. One thing I will say, though, about this Entropic defense so far, we haven't really seen them playing any sort of anyone down towards secret early on in these rounds like they've not had anyone over on the secret stairs looking for for opening picks when these yard executes come out they've always been playing more reactive in that angle where yeah, if they, yeah, I think they you're feel right. that where if they feel that akuma are pushing down they'll, they'll push people down the vents and towards the sort of double doors from the ramp to, to meet them in, in that position but never never trying to take the fight out towards yard from secret which i find interesting yeah they're not trying to stop it at the source are they they're trying to basically plug it they're trying to dam the flow of the water they're yeah. building a dam rather than just stopping it at source <laughs> which um which is okay dams often work but dams also often leak and often break you've got to be careful with that particular strategy from entropic again the flow of water and mother nature is sometimes unstoppable in its own right so no matter where you try and bung it up it may yet still break through Again, lots of smokes towards outside, lots of early presence given over by Akuma. But this time, not actually going to do anything with it. They've been conditioning the Entropic side to anticipate pushes through these smokes every time they see the smokes go down. Unfortunately, Entropic are not going to fall victim to it again here for Akuma. They're still going to stick to their guns, play their reactive playstyle, and hold strong now inside the A site, where unfortunately the frags just are not falling in their favour. It's three kills, and all of a sudden, Ellie and Nickelback are left wondering what's happened. In fact, even Dan, they're just going to go and wait and save this one outright. They want nothing more to do with it. They are gone. Yeah, I mean, that's just super quick. Entropic just got caught napping a little bit there, I think. On that defense. They, they fortunately, will be able to save a couple of weapons because their economy isn't in the best of position. You can see Crad, $50 for him. Lackey, $800. Obviously, they will have the, the loss bonus coming through, but that's only going to be 1400 So saving these two weapons is going to be huge. It will allow Elian and Nickel back to drop over to Crad and Lackey. Forrester can buy himself. So they should have a pretty solid buy, but yeah, saving these two weapons is actually a really big call for them. Because it will allow them to keep the pressure on Akuma. Maybe find a 15th here as well, because Akuma, they've struggled to find consecutive rounds here. It feels almost as if it's been a little bit of a uh, repeat of the first half, obviously with the roles reversed. Where Akuma just can't find themselves any consecutive rounds now, and, and, and Tropic, they're the ones who are in sort of majority control of this, of this CT side, which... Does show, does go to show the sort of strength of the CT side here. Yeah, CT side so far has been very, very strong for both of these two teams. Obviously a 9-6 half for Akuma. This time, already a very strong half for Entropic. You need just two rounds to close this one out, Dan. And this timeout probably could not have come at a better time for them just to steady the ship a little bit after a round loss like that. AWP up here for Elian. Everybody else is onto the rifles they need. It's a healthy dose of utility as well. It is the bottom of the money for most players on Entropic. So if Akuma can win this round, they'll find themselves in for a windfall soon after. But Elian is taking no prisoners this time. He is going very, very aggressive. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be bestowed with a frag just yet. That honor might go to Lackey, who's going to go in right quick, right aggressive. It's a very, very explosive mid-round already inside of the lobby, but it has only gone one team's way, and that's the team in green. That's the team of Entropic. Sensei, Demq, Sergis now 
need to try and recover this one for Akuma. They need to try and find some sort of opening frag. Lackey could be on the table for them if they try and execute in towards his position because he is a little bit isolated away from his teammates. Aggressive in towards this squeaky door room. He's supposed to feet of Sensei really wants to get this frag. He knows he's being baited. He knows that Sensei isn't able to see him. And he knows that if Sensei has a shot come his way, he will not, he's not going to peep that. So he eventually just waits. And it's a quick cleanup for the Entropic side. I love that from from him just just patience not a not sort of firing off early he knows that you can't see him from up on top of that ladder he knows that he just has to wait for him to start coming down and it, it serves him up a delicious little frag and the round as well off the back of it as it's now 15 to 12 and tropic on the verge of taking this one akuma they do get themselves another buy through george but can they keep themselves alive here well, it's last chance saloon for every round to come. And when a forest has been having a 27 frag game so far, it's kind of hard to try and stop that. This CT side for him has been nothing but relentless aggression in towards lobby. And it has paid dividends, much in the same way that Akuma have been conditioning in Tropic to anticipate outside pressure. And Tropic's Forester has been encouraging Akuma to anticipate lobby pressure as well. And now he can play with that as he wants. The conditioning has paid off. But again, it's more outside presence here from Akuma. With all the outside presence they're giving, you start to get the impression that this T side does stagnate a little bit here. And Elian finding the first frag already, now also spotting a second as he drops on down, has the opportunity now to quickly look through the pane of glass in the window. But Sensei reads the play nicely. So a four on four, Orps trading blows. And then Tropic just turtling up again, as they have done so for the majority of this CT side so far, reacting rather than proactivity is the name of the game so they turtle up inside the sites wait for the hit to come on in and then try and formulate their plan from that point forward and forrester's position here is going to be very integral because if jackie and the rest of the boys decide it's time to rotate around in towards this a site using heaven as their pinch point forrest is going to have a lot on his plate and already two players are about to start pushing him down He's just going to hold out beneath. Psycho will inevitably be the first base. And he won't even find the first frag. That is a disaster. Now Nickelback has to hide away inside a putt. Just needs to keep his powder dry for a moment longer. Gets one frag. Can't just quite get away without losing his teammate in the process. But will wrap back around to find nothing more. It is Lackey now in a one versus three situation in which he will not succeed. Akuma get 13 and keep the game alive a little longer. Ooh, Akuma making it work forrester i'm surprised he didn't able to find that frag that was that was a huge huge kill that was required for this uh, entropic side can't find it and now just two more rounds to play with but entropic they'll call another timeout and just in case you're wondering as well the other two matches have already concluded obviously we were a little bit still getting going but also this one has gone the full distance navi they went out against ave do you want to guess the score on that one george is it going to be like 16 to 2 it, oh, no, no. 16 to 12. What? Okay. Yeah, Ave putting up a great show there. Spirits against Amiga. That was a little more one-sided. 16 to 4 for the Spirit side. So they get a comfortable first win. Na'Vi looking a little bit ropey, but they, they come out with the wins either way. And that's what matters for them right now. We're still obviously going to focus our efforts on this matchup here. Entropic versus Akuma. As we are ready to get back into things here after a brief little... Tactical pause. Tactical pause done. Ooh. I up here for Entropic, Ooh. and it is... Uh, oh. It's... Ooh. It's something. <laughs> oh, Brad. Oh, Go on. Crack. Go on. Go on. Just push. You got the Just Mag 7. The Swag 7 as well, no less. Skins equal yeah. wins, as we all know. It's actually a real chance that he can find some frags here, but again, Akuma just... Do not like lobby pressure. Is all outside for them. Sensei already making his way down the secret now with the assistance of Sergis. So relentless in their pursuits towards this outside position. And Entropic are just so unwilling to actually give the dog a bone over here. It's going to be Elian versus Sensei now for this opening shot in the round. Surely it's about to come to blows. They're just going to hold each other out for a while. Who's going to blink first? Who's got the patience? Flashbang in. Elian forced away. Looks himself away in the vent. Sensei will have heard that. 
but he does know about Elian's position. Better yet still, Nickelback, waiting for players inside of lobby, but they're actually going to be coming from main entrance. Surely, with the way this game has panned out so far, you've got to be anticipating something like this. Swag7 finds the first frag. There it is. Krav can now upgrade if he so pleases, but Nickelback with a lot oh. on his plate has managed to. Now, Elian surely has the chance with the AWP to finish the game right here, right now. It's Sensei, no. the last player standing. He'll get two, but Lackey does the job.